Across the Spider-Verse may have just been one of the best animated movies I've ever seen. Each scene felt unique in its own way, and it felt like they never stuck to a single style. Which for some people that could be annoying, but for me, I thought it was very fitting. Into the Spider-Verse set a new standard for animation as a whole, and ever since that movie came out, several studios have been trying their best to recreate the animation style. Which obviously told Sony that they needed to try something different yet again for this new movie. Which they definitely delivered. It was said about the first movie that you could pause at any point in the film and you would have a fully realized illustration. And I would go as far as to say the same principle applies here with the sequel. Every single frame is even more breathtaking than the last, and you could really see the amount of love and passion the team has for these characters. If I were a critic, which I'm not at all, I would give it a resounding 10 out of 10. But enough about how amazing this movie is, I actually want to talk about a certain character I was paying attention to during the movie. A very old and obscure villain from the comics that they brought back, simply called The Spot. Real name being Jonathan Owen. He originally got his powers when he was trying to artificially recreate Cloak's powers for Kingpin. Cloak, obviously being another character from the comics. Now, it's gonna be hard to talk about this character without getting into spoilers for the first two Spider-Verse movies, so spoiler alert. Anyway, his origin story isn't completely changed for the film, but there are some key differences. He was still working for Kingpin, but instead he was a scientist on the Collider project from the first movie. More specifically, he was the one that Miles hit with a bagel when they were trying to recreate the goober thing. But the way he became the spot in this world is drastically different from how it is in the comics. See, in the comics, after successfully recreating Cloak's powers, he steps into a black circle in front of him, ending up in a polka dot looking dimension. And when he he re-emerges, his body is covered in the very same spots. But in the Spider-Verse movie, him getting his powers was more or less a freak accident. See, in the last act of the first film, Miles defeats Kingpin and deactivates the Collider, causing it to explode. And in the midst of the explosion was Jonathan Own, helpless to stop what was about to happen to him. After the smoke cleared, he was covered in spots. Like I said, not that much different, but with Cloak not being a character in these movies, it makes sense for them to change Spot's origin a little. But today, his origin isn't what's important to us. Today, I'm gonna tell you why the Spot is single-handedly the most dangerous, most powerful villain we've seen in Marvel yet. Allow me to explain. Throughout the beginning of the movie, his powers are already scarily useful. He's able to reach right into an ATM, and he's also able to travel basically anywhere he wants within his own universe, which he uses several times throughout the film. This on its own would already make him a formidable foe to basically anyone, including the Avengers. Think about it. Having the ability to create portals and have full control where they go and how long they stay open is a scary power for someone to have. You make them mad? They pop a portal underneath your feet and send you to China or somewhere really far away like the moon or Mars. You could kill someone almost instantaneously just by sending them into space, and they would never even see it coming. And while his powers in the beginning are already pretty intimidating, it's not even close to how terrifying his powers become by the end. Around a half hour into the movie, Spot somehow kicks himself into one of his own spots on his body, and he ends up in a polka dot dimension reminiscent of the one in the comics when he originally became the Spot. But this time, there's a key difference in how the Spots behave. This time, the Spots transport him into different universes. Now, remember how I said he can go basically anywhere he wants within his own universe? Yeah, well, that's out the window now. Now, he can go to literally any universe he wants. He goes into a Lego universe, a comic book universe. He even goes into the universe from the Venom movies and talks to Miss Chen. Now, all this may just feel like a silly moment, and it's treated somewhat like a joke in the film, but the sheer implications of Spot being able to do this is cataclysmic. Up until this point in the movie, we've needed specially designed bracelets in order to freely travel the multiverse without glitching. But here Spot is, just completely bypassing all of that, able to just pop in and out of any dimension he wants at will, without so much as a single glitch. Now, in his travels, he and the spider people chasing him eventually make their way to an alternate collider from a different universe. Spot turns it on and hovers towards the center point, only to just absorb the collider's energy and then just vanish. And I really mean vanish. That's the last time he shows up in the whole movie. We don't see him again, not even in the background. Now, in the movie, he keeps talking about getting revenge on Miles for shutting down the collider and turning him into the spot. But just Think for a second what would happen if he accomplishes his goal and then decides it's not enough and tries to do something else. 
We already know that he can travel between universes, and it's also been established by Spider-Man No Way Home that the Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland universes are connected. Hell, we even see both Andrew and Tobey's universes appear in this movie, as well as the MCU's Prowler scene in Spider-Man Homecoming, so it's very clear that they're connected. Hardcore Marvel fans will have most likely seen Marvel's What If series, but for those unfamiliar with this, it's basically where Marvel takes events from the movies and asks what if these events went differently. Like, what if all the Avengers were zombies, or what if Thor were an only child and Loki didn't exist, or what if T'Challa became Star-Lord instead of Quill? All these questions are equally interesting in their own way, but there's one episode that stands out from the rest, and it's arguably a lot more important. What if Ultron won? In this episode, Ultron obtains all six Infinity Stones, wipes out all life, and then basically just becomes self-aware and sets out to destroy all life in the multiverse in turn forcing the Watcher to break his oath to never intervene in order to save all universes. The thing I wanted to talk about though is how Ultron isn't able to travel the multiverse until he obtains the Infinity Stones, but the Spot is just traveling the multiverse at a whim without so much as a single one. And that was before he absorbed the Collider's energy. Now imagine what could happen if he actually obtained all six Infinity Stones. He would be unstoppable, even by the Watcher. He could destroy an entire universe, then just pop into the next one. And if anyone tries to stop him, he just vanishes. Now, we know that Across the Spider-Verse will have a part two. And while we don't know how it'll end, I really don't think it'll involve us defeating the Spot. I mean, it took us traveling back in time just to defeat Thanos. And he doesn't seem nearly as powerful as the Spot is right now. And we also know that Sony is trying to connect the Spider-Verse movies with the MCU. So this could totally be their way of introducing the next Avengers level threat. Maybe Miles will even become a member of the Avengers. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But in all seriousness, guys, this movie is a must watch. Every single scene is absolutely phenomenal. You can really see and feel every ounce of love that was just poured into this project. It's crazy how just a few years ago we were all praising Sony Pictures for the masterpiece that was and still is into the Spider-Verse. Now we're just doing it all over again with this movie. And I'm sure we'll be doing it a third time when the next one comes out. If you even remotely like Spider-Man, you will love this movie. But anyway, that's it from me. If there's anything I missed, make sure to post in the comments. And hey, while you're already down there, might as well like and subscribe and hit the bell so you know when new videos come out. It's free, so you literally have nothing to lose. Alright everyone, that's all for today's video. I love every single one of you with all my heart. Thank you so much for watching.